Lord. And then, Lord, somebody here got a need that they haven't told. Somebody got a burden they haven't mentioned. But, oh, God, I know that you know. And you're able to give them the breakthrough that they need. Pray for Brother Allen that you look on him. Pray for Brother Stansberry, Brother Hackett, and, and others who are down. Sister Pruitt, we pray on their behalf. Oh, God, we pray for others who we mentioned that, that are down, and we know you got power to turn it all around. Pray, Lord, that you'll have mercy and help as only you can do. Now, Lord, we thank you for your churches everywhere. Help us to keep the faith. Help us to stay close to the fire. Help us, oh God, to keep lifting up your name. Help us to live for you. Help us as we get older to get better. In the name of Jesus, help us to mature. Help us to be the servants that you're calling us to be. Now, Lord, bless our young and our old. Bless us and keep us as only you can. Thank you for being a fence all around us. Thank you for letting your angels watch over us day and night. Thank you for keeping bread on our table. Thank you, oh God, for keeping us day and night. Thank you for supplying all our need according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Thank you for your grace, which is sufficient for us. Thank you, Lord, for loving us the way you do. Thank you for your compassions on us. Thank you. You keep giving us new mercies. Every day we get something new. We thank you for new mercies. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all you do for us. Thank you. Thank you in the midst of it all. Even in this pandemic. Even amid this COVID battle. Thank you. Though we hear tragedies all around us. Thank you. That even in the midst of tragedies, you still show yourself strong. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. We give you glory. We praise your name. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen. 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 You are the live soul. God can use you anywhere. Any time you are the live so God can use you anywhere, any time I'm going to live so God can use me. Anywhere, anytime, I want to live so God can use anywhere, any. I want to pray so God can use. Anywhere, anytime, I want to praise God can use me anywhere, any. Oh, I want to sing so God can use me. Anywhere, anytime, I want to sing. God, can you me? Anywhere, anywhere. Oh, I want to give so God can you. Anywhere, anytime, I won't give 
God can use me anywhere. In it. Oh, I want to live so God can use anywhere. In it. Yeah, I want to live. God can you anywhere in oh I just want to preach so God can you anywhere in it I want to preach so God can use me anywhere. Oh, I wanna talk so God can use anywhere at any time. Oh, I wanna talk. God can use me anywhere at any time. Oh, I want to live so God can use me. Oh, anywhere, any. Oh, I want to live. God can use me. Anywhere, 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 everywhere, anywhere, everywhere, everywhere, anywhere, anywhere, everywhere, anywhere, everywhere, anywhere. Anywhere, anywhere, Lord, at any time. Yeah. In the Old Testament book of 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7 are the verses that I want to read this morning. 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, beginning with verse 1. Now, if my voice don't sound right this morning, I've been battling with allergies this week. I had to get a shot, so I'm going to do the best I can. 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons, to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house, save or except a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him 
and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her. And she poured out. And it came to pass while or when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. Amen. Our theme for this year is faith, family, and the future. I want to use for a subject this morning, getting past a family crisis. Getting past a family crisis. Amen. Thank you, Ursha, so much. Amen. This chapter uh, of the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4, opens with a family that's in a crisis. It's a drastic situation that they are confronted with. This family has trouble on their hands. Many families are dealing with a crisis of some sort. Even as I speak, we don't know the number of families that's in a crisis. Not all are reported on the news. Not all are put in the newspaper. There are many families that's dealing with a crisis that we are not aware of. This family here in the text is in a crisis. We don't get the opportunity to meet them on better terms, but we meet them in scripture as they are confronted with a crisis. And you know, it works that way sometimes. Sometimes you don't get to meet folk until something has gone wrong. As we look at them in the midst of their crisis, we can't help but see the nature of their crisis. For the scriptures lets us know that death had come into this family's house. Uh, they are amid a crisis because uh, the husband, the father, has died. Death has come through and snatched him away. A wife has lost her husband. She has lost the darling of her heart, the apple of her eye. She's lost her protector and her provider. The children have suffered loss. They have lost their daddy. They have lost their father. They have lost the one that they looked up to, the one who took care of them. No longer would daddy be around uh, to hold them in his lap. No wonder would daddy be able to come into the bedroom and cover them and kiss them good night because death has come through and has taken him away. And let me pause and say, brothers and sisters, you never know when death going to show up. Uh, death can show up at any time. Scripture does not tell us that he was sick. We don't know what the cause of death was, but there is one reason for it. It's obvious it was his time. You know, you're not going to leave here until your time comes. Uh, death has come and has left them in a crisis. Nobody saw this coming. So the first thing was death. The second crisis they are faced with is debt. Uh, his, his passing away left them in debt. Uh, it's some obvious debt that he had gotten into while he was living. But unexpectedly, he died. Therefore, the debt fell in the laps of his household. As long as he was living, he was able to handle the debt. But now that he's gone, and they had no such thing as life insurance at that time. Uh, but 
but now that he's gone, the family has the burden of the debt. He's left them in debt. And all oh, brothers and sisters, they have a debt on their hands that they don't have the funds to pay. And I wonder, have, is there anybody here that's ever been in a debt crisis? when your money had gotten real funny and your change was so strange your money was gone and bills were due and couldn't see where the next dime was going to come from uh, debt can be a problem am I right about it? if you don't watch it debt can keep you from having church on a Sunday morning you can show up and sit in the pews, but you can't in the, get in the spirit because you're wrestling with your debt. The, they are in a crisis because they have debt on their hands. But the third problem is they have danger in the family because the creditor has come to the house. The creditor says, I want my money. And if you don't pay me my money, I'm going to take your two sons and they're going to serve as slaves until the debt is paid. Yes, this woman was in danger of losing her sons. They are yet young and yet they are in danger of being taken by the creditor. It is obvious that the creditor has no compassion. The creditor has no mercy. The creditor says, I want my money. Are y'all listening to me? <laughs> and you know, everybody's not going to be considerate. Everybody's not going to be compassionate. Everybody's not going to be kind. Some folk, all they want is their money. <laughs> I wonder y'all listening to me this morning. This man says, I... I want my money, and if you don't give me my money, I'm going to take your sons. There's always something out to take our children. The devil is always working to take our children. It's one way or another, he's always setting some kind of trap to rob us of our children. And oh, brothers and sisters, it takes all we got to keep the devil from getting our children. That's why we ought to bring them to church. That's why we ought to live the life before them and teach them who God is. Because we don't want the devil to get his hands on our children. He'll try to get them on drugs and alcohol, in the games. Try to get them involved in the stuff that can ruin their lives. He's always out to take our children. I encourage us, don't let the devil have your children. This woman was going to stand up for her children. The children need somebody to speak up for them. They need somebody who's going to defend them, somebody who's going to fight for them so that they won't end up going in the wrong direction. This family was in a crisis. Now, this crisis that they are facing was first of all unexpected. Yes, this, this crisis that this family, this family has on their hands was unexpected. And you know, a crisis won't come to your house and ring your doorbell. And when you open your door, they won't ask you, hey, can we come in? Let me tell you what a crisis will do. A crisis will break in. <laughs> A crisis will interrupt your life, interrupt your routine. It'll just come in anyway. 
and it'll come unexpectedly. Crisis won't tell you I'll be at your house on the last week in this month. A crisis will just show up. Are y'all listening to me? It comes unexpectedly. In this crisis, this crisis that they are experiencing now, they were not ready for it. This is what we call the unreadiness for the crisis. And, and oh, you know, sometimes uh, we can all attest to this. There are some things we thought we were ready for. But when it happened, we discovered that we were not ready. Am I right about it? Yes, my brothers and sisters, uh, they were not quite ready for this crisis. They were not ready for what had befallen them. And you know, we ought to be careful what we say about other folk when they are in a crisis. Yes, because uh, it's different when it comes to your house. Long as it's at somebody else's house in somebody else's family, it's one thing, but it's different when it comes to your house, when it shows up in your family. This is something that a king discovered by the name of Adonah Bezek. When you read in Judges chapter 1, the Bible says that the tribes of Judah and Simeon uh, got permission from the Lord to go to Bezek and fight against the Canaanites and the Perizzites. God promised that they would be successful. And so they went to Bezak and fought against them and they conquered the Perizzites and the Canaanites. And the Bible said the king of Donna Bezak tried to get away. He pursued from them or he, he tried to escape from them and, and Israel pursued after him and they caught him. And when they caught him, to, to, to disable him, they cut off both his thumbs and both of his big toes. This man, when they got him, they, they amputated uh, his big toes and his thumbs. They disabled him. Have you ever thought about what your life would be like if you didn't have any thumbs? Think about how much more difficult it would be to even pick up a pencil or a pen to, to write with. They, they cut off his thumbs and his big toes. And when that happened to him, he thought about his life. And Donald Bezak said, I caught 70 kings and I did to them the same thing. I cut off their thumbs and their big toes and they had to eat leftovers at my table. But now God has done to me what I did to them. You see, long as he was doing it to somebody else, it was one thing. But when it happened to him, it was a different story. And some of us like that. Long as trouble at somebody else's house, we don't think much about it. We'll just tell them, look, I'll pray for you. But when it comes in your house, <laughs> say it's me oh lord <laughs> standing in need of prayer y'all listen to me we get more serious about it yes they, they they were not ready for this crisis this this crisis uh that they are now experiencing would also be unforgettable this was a crisis that this family would never forget they would never forget what happened they would never forget how death had taken their loved one away. Uh, they would never forget the debt that they were left owing. And they would never forget the danger of the sons being taken away. And you know, some things happen to you you may have forgotten about. But then there are other situations that you were in that you can't ever forget. And I'm sure if you just think about it, there are some, some situations you've encountered in your life that was distasteful, that was disturbing, and you'll never forget it. Some things happen in your life you'll never forget. They'll never forget this crisis. But they'll never also forget that God helped them 
to get past it. Are you listening to me? And oh, you are not ever forget what God has done for you. You are not ever forget how God blessed you to flip the page and go to the next chapter. Yes, yes. Now, now to be honest with you, uh, this crisis, there's much about it that was unknown when this happened. They, I mean, when I say it's unknown, uh, it's unknown why it happened and, and how did this happen. Because if you notice the text, when the woman spoke to the prophet Elisha about the crisis, she said, you know, your servant, my husband is dead. She speaks as if Elisha was not aware because in the previous chapter, he had been with three kings, the king of Israel, the king of Judah, and the king of the Edomites, helping them through a crisis. But now he's returned, and she talks to him as if he hadn't heard that her husband had passed. And see, her husband was a preacher, and he was in school under the leadership of Elisha. He was a part of the seminary, but he unexpectedly died. And she says, he's dead now. And said, and you know what my husband was like. You know he's a man who feared God. He was a good man. He was a prepared man. He, he loved the Lord. And now he's gone. And, uh, and I brought that point up to tell you that the question comes, why would such a thing happen to this good thing? All right. But listen, God got a number and he's got a time for everybody. Makes no difference who you are. Loving God don't keep you from a crisis. Are you listening to me? Don't think just coming to church going to keep you from a crisis. But coming to church may help you to get past your crisis. Yes, sir. So we don't have all the answers. We don't have all the answers. We don't have all the answers. We, things happen sometimes. We don't know why. We, we can't always figure it out. But we learned a song years ago that said we'll understand it better. <laughs> by and by. Yes, all we don't understand now. If God wants to, he'll explain it to us later. Yes, this, this family is in a crisis. Well, let me hurriedly tell you, as the scripture lets us know, they got past it. They, they had a crisis. But the Lord helped them to get past it. Now, now, now this lets me know that uh, you can't sit down and expect the crisis to work itself out. You know, some people, they, they quickly say, well, I know things ain't right, but, but it'll work itself out. No, it won't. It, it don't just go away by itself. Uh, we need some help to get past this crisis. And there might be some of you listening to me right now. You know your family is in a crisis. And listen, you said, It'll work itself out. It haven't, it haven't worked out yet. You said that three years ago. Still ain't passed. As a matter of fact, if anything, it may be worse. It don't just work out by itself. Are y'all praying with me? Yes. Yeah, so, so this woman said something because she knew that this thing won't work itself out by itself. So what did she do? Well, we look at what they did. <laughs> it can help us to get some idea of what we should do when we face a crisis. First of all, she wanted to hear what the Lord had to say. That's why she went to the prophet of the Lord. She didn't go to just anybody. She went to somebody who would tell her exactly what the Lord said. Elisha had a reputation for telling people what God said. And when he said it, it happened. 
Are you listening to me? She wanted to hear what the Lord had to say about her situation. God has a word for us. Even when we're in a crisis, when we're in trouble, when we're in a situation that we can't get out of on our own, he got something to say to us. Yes, yes. Sometimes we get bogged down listening to the opinion of others. But we need to stop long enough to hear what God has to say. You need to find out what the Lord got to say about it. God got something to say to you about your situation. Every sermon ain't for them. It's for you. <laughs> yes, he got something to say to you about your situation. Your situation ought not be off limits to God. You ought not say, now listen, I don't want God in my business. Well, you're going to need him. How long are you going to try to keep him out of it? You ought to want to hear what he got to say about your situation. He, 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 he's got something to say. He, he, he knows what we need to hear. And this woman was willing to find out from the Lord what they should do. She, she chose not to lean to her own understanding. You know, that's what gets us in trouble every time. When we lean on what we think. You know, counsel ourselves. Lean on our own opinion. Uh, my brothers and sisters, you can't figure your way out of your crisis. I don't care how good you are in math. You can't figure your way out. I don't care how good your grammy is. You can't speak your way out. No, I don't care how good your cooking is. You can't cook your way out. I don't care how good looking you are. Your good looks won't get you out. You got to go to the law. She wanted to hear uh, from God's point of view what she needed to do to help them to get past their crisis. Oh, but not only that, she asked because she was willing to follow instructions. The prophet said to her, well, you know, what can I do? I mean, what do you have in the house? She said, I got nothing. I don't have anything but a pot of oil. He said, you got a pot of oil? She said, yes, sir. He said, I'll tell you what you do. Go to your neighbors. Borrow some empty vessels from them. Get as many as you can get. And when you get those empty vessels, go into that house and shut the door. Be sure you and your sons in that house with the door shut. And you start pouring out that oil into those vessels. And those that get full, set them aside. And uh, the woman went, borrowed empty vessels, brought them to the house, and the text said she shut the door. And uh, she filled all the empty vessels, and she asked the son, give me another vessel. He said, mama, ain't got no more vessels. And she went back to the man of God and said, so I did what you said. I filled all the vessels. He said, and I go, sell the oil and pay your debt. And what you have left, you can live on the rest. Now, 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 I think this part of the verse teaches us how we can be involved to get past our crisis. Notice, notice, she was told to use what she had. <laughs> she had a pot of oil. <laughs> well, y'all listening to me? She still had something left. And let me tell you something. I don't know what all you lost, but you need to take a good look what you have left because what you have left can help you to get through your crisis she had something left yeah she had she had a pot of oil left and oh he told her uh first of all go borrow some empty vessels from your neighbors yes and that's what she did now I'm glad she wasn't a messy sister because she had a good reputation with her neighbors and friends. She wasn't the kind of person that was a backstabber. She wasn't the kind of person that run her mouth too much. Are y'all listening to me? She wasn't a messy woman. 
she was a woman who feared God. She lived a righteous life. She had a good reputation. And she had good relationship with her neighbors and friends. Listen, if all your friends, the only folks you can get along with and live out of Lufkin, you in trouble. <laughs> you mean tell me all these folks in Lufkin, you ain't got no friends? I wish y'all would hear me here. Why you can't get along with nobody in Lufkin? You gotta go all the way to Dallas to have friends. Y'all ain't praying with me this morning. You got to go out of town to find somebody that you can talk with and pray with. All these folk here in Lufkin. And you mean to tell me you ain't got no friends? Nobody you get along with in Lufkin? Something is wrong with you. Go to your neighbors. I wish y'all would pray with me. I hope y'all can see this right here in the text. Go to your neighbors. He didn't say go over to the next town. Go to your neighbors and your friends, people who stay right here in your midst. You got to learn how to get along with folk in your midst. <laughs> go and borrow some empty vessels. Vessels that's empty. Don't get, don't get some that's already got something in them. You need some empty vessels. God want to use some empty vessels. Yes. And that's what God wants. He, wants. he wants us to be some empty vessels coming to him to fill us up. Yeah, so many times we, we can't get what we need from God because we too full of some other stuff. Full of the world full of the pleasures of sin, full of unbelief, full of doubt. Yes, and sometimes just full of ourselves. Yeah, and all of that won't let us get full of his love, filled with his joy, and filled with his goodness. We got to empty ourselves, empty ourselves of self-pride, self-conceit, self-will, self-righteousness, empty ourselves of self-importance, self-indulgence, self, uh, self-confidence, and just all selfishness. We need to empty ourselves. If God going to be able to put something in us, got to come to him empty. Don't come to him acting like you already know enough. If you knew that much, why ain't you got yourself out the crisis? We need God to help us. We got to empty ourselves of stubbornness. Some of us, we so stubborn, you can't tell us nothing. Are you listening to me? Our stubbornness stands in the way of getting past our crisis. This woman, she had to borrow empty vessels. And oh, I'm almost through. But the next thing she had to do, after she borrowed the vessels, he told her twice. Well, it's, he told her once, but it's mentioned twice. Shut the door. Did y'all catch that? He said, now, when you get those vessels, go into the house. Be sure and shut the door. And the text said, when she got those vessels, she and her sons went into the house. And the verse says, and they shut the door. Now, that leads me to tell you, in order for us to get our breakthrough, there are some doors we got to shut. We got to be sure and shut the door. Shut the door to keep other folk out of your business. Oh, y'all listen to me. How can you get past your crisis when you got all these folk in your business? Shut the door. Get off the phone. Quit telling everybody about your situation. Please shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door to keep distractions out so you can stay focused on what God's going to do for you. Shut the door. Shut the door on folk who are so negative that they'll keep you from getting that positive attitude that you ought to have. Shut the door. Shut the door uh, to that relationship you have no business being in. 
shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door to the stressing that you've been doing. Shut the door to worrying and being depressed about it. Shut the door. Shut the door to shut, shut yourself in to God. Shut yourself in so that you can trust God. So you can have faith in God. So you can see what God going to do for you. Shut the door. Which says, Lord, I ain't going looking for it nowhere else. I'm totally dependent on you. Shut the door. Oh, I got to ask you, what door are you keeping open that's hindering you from your blessing? Don't you think it's time to shut the door? Just shut it. Close it. Close the door. Shut the door. Well, well, the next thing she did was she began to pour out into the old empty vessels. Yes. Lord, she filled them up. That's what the text said. Now, within that, I see that the text said that she and her sons were involved. They cooperated with her. And I think that's so important in getting past a crisis. We got to learn how to cooperate and follow instructions. We got too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Everybody want to try to run things. Somebody need to have sense enough to sit back and listen to be told what to do and do what you're told. They were not arguing over who would be the one give it to her and who would be the one take it. There was no, dis there was no discrepancy about that. They were not tugging and putting on a vessel. They cooperated. And that's why some of us can't get past our crisis. We hung up on petty stuff. <laughs> we, we fighting over stuff that's petty. How you gonna get past it with this petty organist? Petty quarreling and, and, and fussing, and carrying on. Are y'all listening to me? <laughs> well, they, there, was, there was cooperation. We just gotta cooperate. But then there was some order. There was some order. They didn't just have fill the vessels. They filled them up. They didn't put a quarter of, a, of, of, of an ounce of oil in there. They didn't, fill, they didn't put just a quarter uh, of oil in there. They filled it up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They, they followed the order because he said, pour into the vessels, fill them up, and set aside the ones that's full. There's an order to everything. God is a God of order. Yes, he is. And if we do things orderly, we can get past our crisis. There's an order to everything. Well, they filled them up. So after doing that, she went back to Elisha and said, I did what you said. And uh, she said, look here. Uh, I ran out of vessels, but I still got a lot of oil left. He said, well, listen, this is what you need to do. Go sell your oil. Because there are folk who be glad to buy your oil. Go sell it. You're going to get some money. <laughs> because people need some oil. That olive oil you got uh, has many uses. Yes, and people be glad to have it. Yeah, yeah. Go sell the oil. Yeah. And when you get the money, pay your debt. Yes, sir. When you get your money... Don't go down to the gambling shack. When you get your money, don't go buy lottery tickets and scratch on them. When you get the money, don't go shopping to find you some new clothes to look good. But go and pay your debt. That's what got you in this crisis in the first place. Uh, you got a debt situation. Now, sell the oil and pay your debt. And when you pay your debt, when everything is paid in full, then you can live on the rest. And so the woman went and sold the oil, paid off her debt, and she had more than enough to live on. 
That's all I want to tell you. When you do things the way God said do it, he'll work it out for you. He won't just give you enough, but he'll even give you more than enough. And I wonder, is there anybody here who can testify with me this morning? Not only did he give us enough, but he gave us more than enough. Anybody here ever thank God for not only enough, but thank him for giving you more than enough? He said, go on and live on it. Well, as I go to my seat, we got something to live for. We got something to live on. Yes, he gives us more than enough to live on. You ought to thank God for what you have to live on. Am I right about it? You ought to thank God for what you have to live by. Because we live by faith. We live by faith in God. Am I right about it? We ought to thank God that we have something to live with. Because he's given us a testimony that no matter how bad things look, God is able to get you past it. We got something to live with, but then we got something to live for. Because every time we find ourselves facing a crisis, it's another opportunity to watch God work it out. We don't throw up our hands and quit when we're facing a crisis. But it's another opportunity to see God work another miracle in your life. Anybody here know you got something to live for? No matter what comes up in your life, you got something worth living for. Because late one Friday... On a hill called Calvary, Jesus died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again. We got something to live for. Hey, God, all right. I don't have much, but I got something to live with. I got something to live on. I thank God for something to live with. And I got something to live for. Jesus is a way maker. Jesus is a door opener. Jesus is all you need. Ain't God all right? Won't God work it out for you? Oh, yeah. I know he will. Anybody know he will? Oh, yeah. God will. He'll work it out. If we'll just listen, follow his instructions, use what we have, do what he said, he'll work it out. He'll, he'll work it out. I ain't going to tell you you're not going to have another crisis. You're going to have them. But it's another chance for you to cooperate with God and watch God work it out. Amen. Getting past a family crisis, as quiet as it may be kept, a crisis comes up in our families. And listen, it's going to happen, but you can get past it. In the name of Jesus, you can get past it. God got the power. Did y'all hear what I said? He got the power. To help us to get past our family crisis. Amen. Everything may not turn out the way you want it. It may not go the way you want it. But watch God get you past it. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you that even in the midst of a crisis, we can lean on the Christ. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you're always there. 
to help us to get past the crisis that we find ourselves facing, the difficulties, the hardships, the heartbreaks, and the disappointments. You're always there. And we thank you. Now help us to do our part. Help us, oh God, to cooperate with you. Help us to follow your instructions to the T that we may experience you working a miracle in our lives. We thank you and we bless your name. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. There might be somebody who wants to accept Jesus Christ in your life. This is the good opportunity to do so. The worst crisis anyone can be in is a sin crisis. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God can help you get past your crisis. Amen. Because by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, he can get you past your crisis. If you're willing to be saved and let God save you this morning, if you'll stand where you are, I'll be glad to lead you in accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody could pay the sin debt for you but the Lord Jesus. God became a man so that he could die because God can't die. But when he became a man, he could die for us, pay for our sins. He's already done it. All you have to do is accept him, accept what God has already done through his son, Jesus Christ. And he promised you can be saved. It's by following his instructions. The Philippian jailer came to Paul inside and said, what must I do to be saved? And the instructions were, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. Romans 10 said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be be saved. Follow God's instructions. And you can be saved. If you are a backslider, you straight away and you want to come back to God. You can do it right now if you just stand. I'll be glad to lead you in prayer. Asking God to forgive you for straying away. And that you're asking to be restored in the fellowship with God. God bless you. There might be another. If you'll stand, I'll be glad to pray with you and pray on your behalf. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the ones that are standing. Some straight away, but they want to come back to you. And we ask you, oh God, that you'll forgive them. Restore them in the fellowship with you. Lord, I'm so glad you are forgiving God. You're the God of another chance. And I pray for them right now that you'll help them to say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. I strayed away. I messed up. But please take me back. Restore me in the fellowship with you. Give me another chance that I may do better, that I may maintain my fellowship with you, Lord. And I thank you for being such a forgiving God. And, Lord, I thank you for them. Now, I pray that you bless them to be assured that you have forgiven them based upon their heart. And bless, bless them and keep them now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you all. May God keep you. Is our prayer on today. Amen. Do we have any visitors with us this morning? Would you please stand? Anyone that's visiting with us today? We just want to see who you are. If you are visiting with us today, amen. God bless you. If you are a visitor, even though you did not stand, I want to tell you thank you for coming. And I sure hope you got something out of the service on today that you can live by. Amen. If there are those of you who have not given your tithes and offering, you can still do so uh, after the benediction. You can come to the front and uh, they'll have the trays here so that you can give your tithes and offerings uh, after the blessing of the benediction. God bless you and may the Lord keep you is my prayer. Let us stand. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you.
the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you all for coming.